Hi, and uh, welcome to episode 12 of One Game Dad. I'm Gregory Palici, the proverbial One Game Dad. And on today's episode, we are taking a holiday interlude to go hunting. Or in this case, uh, hunting Nazis rather than turkey or deer or anything else. That's right, it's Wolfenstein. And, uh, well, you know, part of it is because, you know, there's a lot to be thankful for. All of those people who have fought fascism but it's a fight that we can't give up and while this is certainly not in honor of them I think uh, our recent events in the world are something that it definitely it's time to think about what we're doing why we do it and especially with a kid now it's it's one that I have to think about all the time because it's you know Finland is not immune from these issues it's got uh, right-wing parties that are doing their darndest to uh, make it difficult for uh, immigrants such as myself. And, you know, my daughter being you know, half an immigrant, not, I wouldn't say, I mean, she's not mixed race because my wife's white, I'm white, but, uh, well, at one point, you know, the Finns weren't considered white. Hell, Italians weren't considered white. But, you know, the times have changed, so I, I get the privilege of being... Being white, uh, as well as the middle class, educated, male, all that. And, well, my daughter will get most of that. She, being a girl, won't have the privilege of being male. Or won't experience the power privileges of it. She's not, ne not that being male is necessarily better, but uh, that's not what I'm here to talk about. It's... Uh, Finland... Finland has... Finland has its... Finland ha has its issues with uh, right-wing nationalism and, and fascism, as every country does these days, to the point where it can be very um, welcoming. And uh, I mean, not to a massive degree for me, but I do see it with lots of immigrants, particularly those that uh, don't pass for white. And it's it sucks because Finland needs immigrants. Finland needs us, but it, there are a lot of people in denial about that. I mean, it's the same thing in the U.S. Uh, 
But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, Finland also has a history of being not Nazis, but allies in the Nazis because Finland had a very, uh, well, was in a difficult position during World War II, which in effect was actually three wars for Finland. Uh, and what was it? A war of. Uh, what was it? The War of Russian Aggression, the Winter War, and uh, I don't, I always forget the names of the, what they call the three wars here in uh, Finland. But basically, because Russia was an ally of the United States and the UK, F Finland wasn't able to be an ally with them because they were fighting one of their allies so they were stuck in the middle where they're not necessarily supportive of the nazi regime but they were the only one to turn to when and the aggressor is uh russia and yeah so you're stuck in a position that sucks what are you supposed to do and so, Finland has always had a very different history than a lot of other parts of Europe in terms of uh, World War II and the Nazis. But then they also had to fight to kick the Nazis out of their own country. And, well, while that is, that it's... That's an interesting thing to experience and to hear talked about. You know, it, it also puts uh, Finland in a perpetual state of insisting that it wasn't in World War II, but that it, again, it had these three wars. And yet, you know, you have... Uh, yeah, you had, you, you still have this insistence that, you have these people that insist that the Nazis are good, that fascism is good, and that buy into this rhetoric of nationalism, national socialism, that just this utter bullshit. And, you know, we're seeing in the States, and the States has always had this, and uh, Finland's always had its elements of racism. I mean, even to the extent where you have groups that are so in denial about the fact that w what it means to be Finnish, that speaking any other language other than Finnish makes you not Finnish. It, it's a complete denial of who Finland Swedes are. And... Yeah, that, that, that hypocrisy there is just... It's astounding to deal with, but no one ever said that fascists were smart. Because we have to keep dealing with this, because we have to because fascism isn't something that went away with the defeat of the Nazis, because they are coming back and they're gaining power through various institutions, through misinformation. It is something we have to keep fighting, and it's something I have to educate my daughter about. It's... It's something I have to educate my daughter about. 
something I have to keep fighting for, my wife is fighting for, the, the equality, the inclusion, the respect, and the uh, protection of, at the same time, protection of cultures, you know, because being from the predominant culture, yeah, it's very easy for us to appropriate without understanding, without uh, respecting uh, a particular culture, um, you know, the taking advantage. And Finland has its own issues with that too, with the indigenous uh, Sami population. Uh, and that everything they've gone through and are still going through. It's... It's something... It, it's interesting how at times Finland very much parallels the U.S. and yet doesn't. And... It's... It, it, it's something that, well, I, I think about quite often because, hey, even here in Finland, they enjoy tractor pulls. You'll find uh, rodeos, tractor pulls on TV. Um, so <laughs> it's, yeah, it just it screams of Americana to me because it, there still is a very significant rural population. And it's it's one that you know it sh shares those similarities with the U.S., but it's also it's one that has to become accepting. That it has to become that experiment that the U.S. is. Maybe it goes about it differently. Maybe it's. It recognizes what it is, but also uh, what the future is going to be, you know, rather than being in denial. And, you know, my wife's working on that, being a politician in the Green Party, uh, working in international management and aid and development, whereas... Uh, well, I being a stay-at-home dad, I have to... have to be concerned with, you know, being, well, the education aspects of you know, my daughter and uh, getting her to understand the bad aspects of you know, Nazis and how you may, they may feel that there is a an appealing aspect to it, the, the uh, and that 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 philosophy is uh, one that's. Not just faulty, but it's uh, failed. It, it's you know it, it, it it's a denial of who we are as a family, uh, what we've been about, the work that her, her mother does, that I've done, that even uh, uh, my parents do, and you know. Well, I didn't have grandparents that served in uh, 
uh, World War II. I did, uh, and there was other family. I had family that served in the Korean War. And, you know, while I've worked as a civilian contractor yeah, and worked with friends who have been in the military or, you know, colleagues, you know, the fight is never that clear. Except when it comes to Nazis, because they're Nazis. They don't care about anything they are going to they're just seeking to usurp power and you know decimate the world in a way that oh, sorry I'm looking for the map In a way that <sighs> that is going to bring no one any Anything, any good? This, you know, falling for the whole Nazi ideal is going is is a losing way, and you know, uh, Waypoint has had some uh, excellent discussions about this so I'm going to uh, I'll recommend that you watch uh, watch listen to their podcasts on these fairy games but it's it's one that is concerning because of how relevant it's all become to to today's uh, world in that you know these enemies everyone assumed you know we defeated that we had all resoundingly been like okay yes they are bad let's uh, let's move on from here Well, turns out we hadn't. That there are still people in denial about this very thing. And, you know, it, it's... Like, not that I didn't want to have to educate my daughter about any of this but it was very it was always something that I thought would be relegated to the history books to a larger degree and that would there would be other fights and there are other fights but the It's it it is in that way. It's these are 
these are fights that my daughter is going to face that my wife and I are going to be dealing with you know not just because of her political career but because it's well that's the it's the world we're in and it's now that I'm lazy and I don't want to fight I do want to do things and It's... Yeah, I, I just... I don't know what to say. It, it... Yeah, you know, the... They're Nazis. I mean, I, I thought... I, it's not that I'm in disbelief that people weren't still racist or fascist or any of this but to just so fully like still buy into this philosophy when it's like I Well, this is the thing, like, nationalism has taken a lot of different, lots of weird different forms that I've seen all over the world from, you know, who is and isn't, uh, you know, eligible for certain rights, you know, the way that uh, a, a particular a particular country works in terms of granting rights to people, you know, like, oh, your ethnicity, your nationality is put upon all your ID because, hey, we want it's just the way it should be. It's... Yeah. Yeah, you know, in terms of who can... Who can gain rights to particular areas, things? I, it's all... It's all something that we have to fight to change. And... It's, yeah, it's something that we're dealing with here in Finland. It's not just the States. And at times, you know, being outside of the States and everything going on there, it very much... I very much feel like I am... Not... 
not betraying the U.S. I'm not betraying the U.S., but like I should be there doing something more about it. It's not enough to simply talk about it. But I don't live in the U.S. I haven't lived in the U.S. for years, and so to go there and you know try and change it seems odd because it has been out of the community for so long that I yeah I uh, oops I died yeah it's I don't, yeah, I just, I don't, I'm not as connected as the people that are there. And that, that's not an excuse not to, but, you know, we're more connected here. We're, this is where our life is. This is where my... This is, yeah, where we're making a go of it. And, you know, being abroad as long as I have, being, being, Being as removed from the U.S. as I have, but also having dealt with this shit with simply being a U.S. citizen abroad has made me not necessarily more quiet. I mean, it's definitely made me stop and think about U.S. foreign policy because I've been involved in it by... It's, yeah. Being, being. Being abroad, bringing an immigrant has made me, being an expat ha has, very much changed my my approach to politics, my uh, approach to nationalism, my my even my identity. I mean, how could it not? I, I've been abroad for now a greater portion of my life, and it's just that that's going to have an effect on you. I mean, the funny thing is, my father has been abroad just as long and even uh, my mother but because they went abroad when they were older it's had a different effect upon their on their identities and not that that's a bad thing it's just for different people and so i've grown up in a different way i've changed in a different manner 
because of you know what I've what I've encountered and that's just the very much the natural thing of thing natural way of things It's one that one that I'm going to have to deal with and my daughter and I've talked about this previously is she's we may have similar experiences we may have different because currently she's only being raised in one country now okay initially that was probably my parents thoughts he's only ever going to be raised American and then other opportunities came along and you know my parents took them uh, but at the same time both of my parents were of a single nationality and while you know they too thought yeah Nazis are pretty uh, good and gone turns out they're not and that we have to keep fighting them why I have this this is why I'm using this game today I'm playing Wolfenstein the new Colossus because sometimes you just have to hunt some Nazis you just have to shoot some truly bad people people who are supporting a, a bad regime regardless of why they do it don't give them a chance to explain because, well, they're bad and they're Nazis. The more is there to say. Yeah, so today's fight has been about, or today's talk is about hunting on this holiday, giving thanks for opportunity to shoot some Nazis. In part because, well, the uh, Black Friday sale on Xbox was pretty good and definitely gave the opportunity to, you know, pick up a couple games that. Pretty good prices. So. Because of that. Because of that, that I am playing this game and not Witcher 3 or at Destiny 2, I, I am still playing those when I get a chance, but while this is super bloody, there's something truly uh, satisfying about playing a game that has a good story, an understandable bad guy, or bad forces. 
Well, now that I understand the, uh, the Nazi ideal, but uh, the appeal of them, uh, but it is the the fact that I do get to just fight some really bad guys and not have any qualms about why or what I'm doing which is a rarity in a video game I, again not that uh, this game is perfect by any means and uh, it, what it's saying or what it's doing but you can't fault the game for letting you kill Nazis and uh Because of that, I think I'm going to call it a, uh, a day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'm uh, Gregory Palici. You can find everything I do at OneGameDad.com or on Twitter and Facebook at one game dad same goes for youtube and patreon and of course twitch i'm i'm everywhere so just search for one game dad and you'll find it thanks again and tune in next time